and even murder in Egypt. The year is sometime in the 1920s, or is it the 2020s? And 12 intrepid travellers of all ages and backgrounds have embarked a rare adventure of exploring Egypt's secret tombs and treasures. In this merry band, there is the Egyptologist, tall, dark and handsome. He has personally invited this seemingly random group to join him visiting some of the rare sites of Egypt. His intensity captivates everyone, but is he too invested? Why does he want to go to visit the isolated tombs where no other tourists go? Nothing can stop the will of the pharaohs. I have been chosen by Ramses himself, and only I know how to access the secrets to the tombs. The Egyptologist travels with his mother, the High Priestess, chronicler of his travels and willing to protect him at any cost. The dapper gentleman is the de facto host of the group and the pinnacle of sartorial elegance. Though the other men may try, they cannot match his style and easy manner. When the temperatures are this hot, can he really be so cool on the inside? The Egyptologist has also invited La Maman, the Grand Dame of the Boat, a French woman of style, grace, and a keen eye for detail. However, she senses that something is amiss. Please keep an eye on my daughter. She has very suspicious friends and she gets herself into crazy situations. I'm here, but I cannot keep an eye on her all the time. La Maman is travelling with the socialite, her daughter, a woman who is always in the papers for her fashion sense and who seems to captivate everyone she meets. But why does she seem so distracted? The Egyptologist seems very keen to catch the attention of the socialite and is often seen deep in conversation with her. I wonder what it would take to get her away from these people for the next few hours. Only she can appreciate the true wonders of my Egyptology. The socialite is on the trip with her beau, the movie star, famous on the silver screen in both silent movies and the talkies. Is his charm for real? Or does he have nefarious intentions? And is he safe from La Maman? What does he think of the Egyptologist's affection for his paramour? He's trying to steal her away when we get to Abu Simbel, but I won't let him get away with it. I will make sure that that never happens. The photographer is seemingly mild-mannered, but always lurking somewhere with his camera. What exactly is he trying to capture? And why is his camera always pointed in the direction of the one lady in particular? Then there are the two Italian opera singers. Seemingly harmless, these two love to laugh, sing and probably understand more English than the others think. However, they hide their emotions behind their guidebooks. Is there more to them than meets the eye? The Couturier is famous fashion designer. However, her wit is even sharper than her scissors. Do not cross her or she will cut you on the bias and not miss a single stitch. Which brings us to the heroine of this story, Miss Marple, friend of La Maman and a homely spinster who lives alone in France, gardening, reading and renovating. The only thing she loves more than her quiet life is being an amateur detective. She can cause, uh, discover, trouble before it even happens. Consequently, she brings her trusty selfie stick with her everywhere. It's the only way to find the real clues. She has been immortalized in books by her friend Agatha, comfortably ensconced nearby in the elegant old cataract hotel on the Nile, and eagerly awaiting news of any misdeeds. And naturally, having been invited on this trip, Miss Marple just knows that big trouble is afoot, and she doesn't know where. I have this awful feeling that I'm not going to make it on this boat to the end of the trip. Don't be silly, darling. I'm sure if we're not here, there'll be a perfectly plausible reason. 
Under no circumstances should anyone worry or come looking. That poor woman, she seems so distraught. I need to make sure that nothing terrible happens to her on this trip. I'm going to keep my eyes peeled. And to further confirm Miss Marple's suspicions, we have the inspector, a man as handsome as he is ineffectual. Uh, wait, am I reading this correctly? Yes, as handsome as he is ineffectual, and he travels with an even longer selfie stick. He is the bane of Miss Marple's existence, and seems to thwart her every move. Something dreadful was sure to happen with both Miss Marple and the inspector on board, but what? And to whom? Would they kill each other before they solved the case? The adventure was only just beginning. Our story begins. The trip commenced happily enough. Our merry voyagers were the perfect companions. They shopped for handmade items and spices, bought Egyptian clothing, and dined in local restaurants. They visited historic sites, learned of gods and pharaohs, and legends thousands of years old. They even rode the obligatory camels to isolated tombs and temples. They laughed as they sailed on feluccas and motorboats. As the sunsets fell between their jokes and stories, they seemed the picture of a well-chosen group of, dare one say it, friends. However, the real adventure was to be a five-day boat trip on Lake Nasa. They secure a small but beautiful boat, the Sai, to explore the 550 kilometers of tombs around the nearly deserted Lake Nasa, and home to several temples relocated by UNESCO in the late 1960s. Would our travelers be safe all alone on this stretch of water, bordered by nothing but Nubian desert from Aswan to Abu Simbel, practically on the border of Sudan? How would they survive without the comforts of home, like the ability to send a telegram or receive a phone call? If they screamed, who would hear? Would the heat go to their heads? Was murder on the cards? Perfect, so it? wonderful. It is just perfect. I'm pinching so myself. It was a beautiful vessel with brass beds, elegant seating, and the warmest, most generous staff ever encountered. We've just discovered we have our own balconies up here. Oh. Hi, how are you? Good. Hello, Vivian. Hello, Hello. I can Hello. see you. <laughs> and this is enough room to hand over the ring. So, okay, so here's the thing. Um, yeah, Philip, I think that we can't have too much chateau love on these balconies. No, because I don't think these so. screens are not entirely <laughs> private. Chateau love is strictly for the cabin. <laughs> exactly. Gentle breezes were met with the enticing smells of a master chef at work in the kitchen. Miss Marple seemed excited on the outside. Her selfie stick was waving. Was it all an act, or was she enjoying herself? There's something very suspicious about a few of the people on this boat. Could the photographer be plotting with the Egyptologist? There was little time to waste, though, for the Egyptologist. The travellers were soon off to another temple on the remote island of Kalab Shah called Beit el Wali. This temple is over two thousand, just over two thousand years old. And the special thing about this, it was moved from 50 kilometers away to this Amazing. point uh, back in the 60s when they were, you know, moving all the temples and building the high dam to create Lake Nasa.
The Egyptologist could not wait to impress the socialite with his wealth of knowledge. Hmm, an empty temple. So many places to commit a dastardly deed. But wait, why is the Egyptologist trying to get the socialite onto the edge of the roof of his temple? Phew, everyone descended safely. Just when they thought it was safe, the group was directed to another temple on the other side of the island. They made it back onto the boat, no one was missing, and set sail for the isolated waters of Lake Nasa. They're getting a grand welcome back onto our boat. <laughs> what would happen when darkness descended? Everyone survived the night and were greeted by a breakfast for kings. All this sightseeing created quite the appetite. As usual, the inspector was hard at work, but he could be roused for food. Fish curry. Well, it's not very spicy. It's a fish casserole uh -huh. uh, with chilies and peppers and all sorts. Fantastic. And lime. Wonderful. And some rice and some mm. potatoes. Mm -hmm. Really delicious, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, we love Egyptian cooking. We do. So far. I haven't <laughs> had a bad meal so far. I know. It's yeah. exciting. <laughs> Coming up for seconds? Yeah, that was fantastic. So just over my shoulder here is a big temple called Dakar, which we're not going to see today, but it's pretty impressive up on the side of the hill. And of course it was moved here like all of these temples were by UNESCO as part of the projects. But um, yeah, it's incredible. The boat began to make its way toward the land. Miss Marple thought this was a good opportunity to stay on board and search the boat for clues while the others looked at another temple. I'm going to have to keep my eyes peeled at everything that happens on this boat. What we're looking at right here in front of us is the local market. For someone who doesn't like to miss out on something very exciting and beautiful happening, I couldn't be more delighted that they've all just left and I get to stay on the boat. The others visited the extraordinary Valley of the Lions, famed for its entrance of sphinxes. La Maman and the Dapper Gentleman seemed to be spending a lot of time in each other's company. Was she no longer worried about the safety of her daughter? He's so elegantly dressed for visiting the temple. Look at this, it's beautiful. It well, I tell you, they've got your style. Yes. I love it. I think it's beautifully done. And I love the colour. Was 
Was Miss Marple missing out on seeing this temple? She didn't think so. After all, she was there to prevent her murder. Imagine Miss Marple's dismay when the inspector returned early, ahead of the others. Judging by the camera in his hands, he apparently had similar ideas to her. What nerve! Miss Marple decided to confront the inspector. After all, someone might be about to be murdered, or worse. I'm very concerned that something might happen to one of our passengers. Now, Miss Marple, stop interfering. If anything bad happens, you must let me know. I'm the policeman on this boat. Real police work. We depend on evidence, Miss Marple. Miss Marple found herself very flustered by the inspector. Whenever this happened, she calmed herself with her watercolours. So she decided to paint a picture of the view from the boat. Apparently one of the staff thought it a good moment to think as well. Thankfully, the staff seemed beyond reproach. Not so much could be said for the passengers. years ago we are participating in all the old pastimes reading cards watching the sunset listening to the birds chirp painting pictures what am i looking at oh hello little birds on the roof little stopover on their way to yeah, from across the lake. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's winning? Yeah. Uh, Philip is. <laughs> well but done, he's Philip. Teach, he's teaching me the game, <laughs> yeah. so I'm playing okay. at a slight disadvantage till I learn the game. Wonderful. It's yeah. called, well, it's a Dutch game. My grandfather used to play it. Uh -huh. It's called Tupin, but I'm not quite sure what it would be called. Tupin? Tupin. Tupin. So T-O-E-P-E-N. What, okay. like, what I like about this game apparently is there's something called, uh, you get the chance to do your laundry. <laughs> Because there's something called changing your dirty laundry. Oh, really? And Is that really a thing? And yeah, after three that's so funny. On a, on a three days in a boat, I'm ready to play that role. You're ready to, to change the dirty laundry? <laughs> Once they returned to the boat, the Egyptologist had created his own mythical concoction for everyone to try. Was this a poison or love potion? Once they tried it, everyone was behaving very strangely indeed. We have Hathor, my favourite goddess, and Amun. Uh, I'd probably curse his favourite god. I mean, it's the <laughs> it's the god that started it all. It's the sun god. It's the all powerful god. So of course it's. And I'm holding Hathor, which is the floral one, and it's so beautiful. This is Amun. Yes, it's musky with sandalwood and amber, and it's dark and it's really beautiful. It is it is a tough one. I think personally, um, I'm doing the daytime Hathor, but I really yes. do like the Amun as well. Sorry. Meanwhile, the inspector thought that the best cruise might be found in the kitchen. Did we mention how ineffectual he really was? Who wrote this script? Did the inspector find what he was looking for in the kitchen? Only a tasting would ensure that no food had been tampered with. He would volunteer. What a hero. Hello. What, 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 one minute can you us? Banja. Beetroot in English. Yes. Banja. Banja in Arabic. Arabic. Banja in Arabic. Yes. Banja. And goulash. 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 Well, all these guys have been cooking, you know, fabulous feel, meal, uh, meals for us out of the kitchen here. Also, I'm going to be tea. Oh. Super delicious tea. 
Lenti. So we have lentil soup just going past me. The dapper gentleman and La Maman suspiciously retired to their rooms at the same time. And then the couturier and the photographer did the same. The socialite said something about retiring with a good book despite her reputation for parties. Something was truly amiss. I think it's a serious situation. You could be right, Miss Marple, but leave it to the professionals as I keep saying. Was something wicked about to happen? And then it did. Duel of duels. The karaoke microphone emerged. It was one of the deadliest and most unpredictable of weapons, especially when wielded by amateurs. Only the movie star knew his way around such a contraption. Would someone become a karaoke casualty? Miss Marple decided that participating would be the only way to ensure the safety of both men. Hummingbird, hummingbird, feathered so fine. If I, if I clipped your wings, it would not make you mine. No, no, it would not make you mine. Ah. No. <laughs> Oh, man. man, I feel like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> if I could turn back time, if I could turn back time, if I could turn back time, oh, baby. I guess that's so we don't have a plot. But at least I'm sure of all the things we got. Jolly, jolly, and ice is green. With you, Georgie. <laughs> <laughs> my love is just like school, my love is bad. What I cry. Oh, how I love you, baby. Baby, baby, baby. Would I cry? <laughs> where have all the good men gone? And where are all the odds to press for the fight? I need a hero! And they all survived another night, though the other passengers might have murdered them for their singing. It was truly death by karaoke. I need a hero! I'm only up for a hero! How are you feeling, Philip? Very well. Very good. good. Well rested. Is it yeah. all coming back How's to you now? Voice? Uh, it's all coming your back. Your voice well rested? <laughs> good. That's a little bit of off-key singing, but anyway. Oh my god, it was so bad. <laughs> you could also get yeah, that. Yeah. You did very well. You either have to ignore the music on the mic uh -huh. and just sing. I love your dress. This is gorgeous. I think today it's absolutely beautiful. And look, she's a vision with a parasol. Uh, I think we're definitely ready for for more tempo. I do recognize that bag. Yes. It's another glorious day. Our boat is in the background, and we are setting off to the Temple of Amada. Now that is something. Here we see Penaud holding his arms up, wearing a beautiful red dress. But what's amazing is, in this scene, if we avoid the little dust mites and things running on the wall, we will see two priests, and they are adorning Penaud with different jewelry. So, because he's the viceroy, of course, he's lifted to this level. Mm -hmm. But during the 20th dynasty, at the end, when people like Penaud were sanctioning tomb robbings, they were gifted with all of this beautiful gold coming straight from the pharaoh's tomb. 
Miss Marple thinks she might have spotted the assassin. He is carrying a scorpion. Who would be the victim of this deadly creature? We know you love all the little creatures. Oh, no, 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 no. Do you want to take one of those home with I'm you? Okay. Are you I'm, sure? I'm okay. I mean, it's friendly. And we begin the trek to the next great monument. We are just right here in the middle of the desert. <laughs> We've been showing you guys a lot of temples, a lot of beautiful scenery, a lot of water, the boat, some of our fun adventures on board the boat, but what we haven't covered is just how utterly alone we are out here. This is, this is an experience I've never had anywhere else in the world. We are the only ones for probably hundreds of kilometers. We've seen only one other tiny boat on the lake in four days. We're surrounded by desert, by sand, these monuments, and it's just our tiny little group. We've got Egypt on the one side, Sudan on the other, and it's just us out here all alone. We really do feel like the intrepid adventurers of 1900. Whilst our lady detective was getting sentimental, she was forgetting her important task. Thankfully, the inspector was still looking for clues. Not all the time. Have you not no. remembered all the names of all the temples? No. All and the all gods, the gods? Yes. All the dynasties. I've picked out my favorites, and I feel like that's good enough for a start. I love me too. Peanut? Peanut? Yeah. Peanut? Penut. Penut? Peanut? Peanut. Peanut. You're allergic to peanuts. Exactly. But it was a nice temple. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Okay, come show me the tree. I was hoping you'd the concept of tree. Philip and I love anything that's decorative. It's like, oh, this is so interesting historically, but also look how pretty that is. Oh my goodness. Oh no, that's spectacular. Look at the shoes. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> you two are so cheeky, I can't take you anywhere. Anyway, I'm here with these three totally misbehaving, recreating their own versions of Egyptian history. Yeah, which exactly. Which are actually very amusing, and then Curtis can put us right in a minute. Here. We have Ramses the second standing by the tree of life. Mm -hmm. He's picking his name off of the tree, his royal name. Ooh. And he's presenting his name towards the god Ptah and Sekhmet. And next to that, we have the god of wisdom, Thoth, writing down exactly what is happening. He's giving Ramses his name. Right, so he's, he's not embalming or killing him with a poison dart. But no. <laughs> That's, that was part of it. We needed to clear that up, thank you. The inspector was being suspiciously friendly to Miss Marple. Things then became very strange indeed. The Egyptologist had given them a love potion. It's fantastic. Is it? Yeah, you gotta, you got to come and see this one. Oh, I'm so excited because apparently this one is the, has the best preserved interiors. Yes, I'd say that's true. Painting-wise, the colours are still good. Okay. And uh, yeah, so come and have Come a show me. Inside the Temple of Amada, the photographer and the couturier were inseparable, and even La Maman and the dapper gentleman had eyes for only each other. 
Did no one care any more about the terrible deed which might take place? And it cannot be! Not Miss Marple and the Inspector! It's amazing. The covers in here are fantastic. Absolutely best we've seen by far. So this tomb is incredible. And uh, if you look at the different uh, images, they're all very similar to ones we've seen before, but you really appreciate them now because you can see the colour and you can see the dimension, the three-dimensional um, aspect of every one of them. So, yeah. Back on board, it was clear that something in the Egyptologist's potions had put a spell on the entire boat. Even the crew were feeling the chateau, uh, I mean Egypt, love. What was in that perfume? <laughs> this is the end. this is the never ending the never ending dance. <laughs> <laughs> Exhausted, it's official. This has been the best trip ever. One might wonder if our excitable, though probably poisoned, voyagers might ever wake up from such a frenzied night, but indeed they did. In fact, they were positively chipper with delight, for the mighty Abu Simbel was waiting for them. Would they actually survive this trip? Maybe Miss Marple was wrong all along. Abu Simbel, right behind us, just over my shoulder you can see the two temples. This must be a very exciting moment for you. This is, it's my absolute favorite royal couple, my favorite pharaoh, my favorite queen, and I'm seeing them from the river. I've always wanted to see it from this perspective. symbol this morning. It is 5.40 in the morning. It's still cool outside. The wind is blowing. This is a beautiful time to be here. This is going to be a lovely experience.
me into the temple of Nefertari, and I think I'm going to be the only one in there. She thought she was the first one there, but the inspector was waiting for Miss Marple in the temple of Nefertari. He gave her the terrible news. The socialite, whose name we learn was Stephanie, and the movie star had disappeared. There is no way that either of them would have missed this opportunity for content. Uh, I mean cultural enrichment. Something dastardly must have happened. She was last seen on the balcony with the photographer. And why was the Egyptologist acting so strangely? And where were the Couturier and the photographer? We both know we're suspects. So the demon and I are going to jump on a bird and fly. And we're going to do it together. What is Stephanie? Has anyone seen Stephanie? <laughs> Has anyone seen Stephanie? Has there been a murder in Egypt? <sighs> wake up, wake up. What? I just had the craziest dream. What was that? I dreamt we, I dreamt we were in Egypt. <laughs> what happened? We were in Egypt and we were on the Nile and we were on a an old-fashioned 1920s like boat and this was the weirdest part. <laughs> um, a lot of our chateau friends were there with us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we were all dressed up and we we went to the world's greatest monuments mm -hmm. in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And it was all like it was all like an Agatha Christie story, and I was Miss Marple, and you were the bumbling inspector. I think someone died, and I was trying to solve the case, mm -hmm. and you were trying to help me. Right. But we kept getting distracted with clues mm -hmm. all over Egypt. Okay. What kind of clues? Well, clues like, like food and, and, uh, and poisons. Poisons? Poisons. Okay, that's weird. Well, I would love to go to Egypt with you one day, sweetheart, but we have far too much work to do at the Chateau. I know. It was a beautiful dream, though. Anyway, hurry up and get dressed. Now we need to go and have breakfast. Always work to do. <laughs> yes, that's true. But come on, I have a surprise for you. Come with me. Look at that. <gasps> it wasn't a dream wasn't after a dream. all. No. I can't believe it. We really are in Egypt. And you really are the inspector. I am the inspector, Miss Marple. <laughs> I wonder what happened to Stephanie and Philip. I so don't want to go. No. We're so very, and I'm going very for sad. Really exciting. I, I just wish it was a day later. I want to stay here on the boat. <laughs> well, it's been grand, and I until think, next time. Absolutely. You can think of me eating French cheese instead of camel cheese. I'm just trying to make you a tiny bit jealous about any one yes. thing I can find. Right now. You've got the best here. Yes. But you should leave it to the professionals, Miss Marple, and stop this amateur sleuthing. Now I have to stop filming or I'm going to step in camel poo. <laughs> Chateau lovebirds. <laughs> Which brings us to the end of our mystery. The socialite and the movie star were indeed alive and well, but a murder did take place after all. I love you, baby. Baby, baby, baby. We thank the Chateau players for their Oscar winning performances and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. There are more Chateau Love Adventures next week where we travel from the pyramids back in time to meet Napoleon and Josephine. <laughs>